Hello everyone, uh, this is Jonathan Pete, and I am here to walk you through my portfolio. Uh, so this is the homepage uh, for my portfolio. Uh, it's uh, I used Weebly to house my ePortfolio. I have the most um, comfort with Weebly. I've used it in the past. Um, I think it's pretty user friendly. Um, so <clears throat> I wanted to get the, the purpose out of the way uh, right away so that people could kind of really understand that this is for people to become familiar with me as an educator and for evaluative purposes, uh, possibly be used as something in the future for maybe uh, a job interview, depending on kind of where things go. Um, I think maybe that might shift the purpose of some of these uh, artifacts or some of the things I say about myself. Um, but this is largely linked to the Charlotte Danielson model, uh, which is what my district uses. Uh, and that's kind of all stated in here. So uh, pictures, um, I wanted to give people uh, a look at what my family looks like, give them the, the personal touch on the homepage about who I am. Um, I have some links in here that talk about the, the school that I work for, which has been recognized as one of the top schools in the country. Um, and one of the harder things about teaching at an international baccalaureate school is usually unless people kind of like seek it out, they're not always sure what it is. They may have heard of it. Um, so this is a nice video down here that kind of, uh, we had a former grad who started her own business come back and make like a promo video for the International Baccalaureate, specifically the International Academy of Macomb, my school. Um, I'm not featured in this particular video because I was away at training when they shot it. Um, but, uh, this video does a pretty good overview of explaining what the International Baccalaureate is like to kind of contextualize what some of the things I might be doing, uh, what, what they look like and how that might be a little bit different maybe than a, than a regular public school. Um, I also thought I'd put down the IB mission statement down here, um, because one of the challenges I had to face was making sure that people had somewhat of a grasp of the international baccalaureate, but also making sure, um, that they understood what the Danielson model was and how those two kind of had to have, uh, a synergy to work together for the portfolio. Uh, so I used standard navigation across the top. Um, so I figured the next best thing after talking about me and explaining a little bit about what the International Baccalaureate was and what my school looked like would be to um, inform the viewer um, if they were unaware what the Danielson model looks like. Um, and so I grabbed uh, this graphic, which I thought was um, basic enough for the the intro. And again, I linked a YouTube video in um, from people talking about the Danielson model um, and how that works. Um, one of the reasons I also put this in here for evaluative purposes is in my district because we have 18 different districts housed within my one building. Not everybody's on the same evaluation system. Um, so for uh, evaluative purposes for me, Having this here for my evaluators uh, would be a big help um, due to the fact that not every district in my building would be using the Danielson model. Um, they might be using their own in-house model. Um, so this right here is, is a basic overview. As we move through to the, dom the domain, I start each uh, page with what the domain is. And then the graphic I used up at the top breaks it down into specifically what each strand of, of the piece that the subdomain would look like. Uh, I started with my graphical image, um, which was a word cloud, which I got some feedback on that people liked um, the words that were in it. They thought that that really fit well, um, specifically my subject matter experts talked about how they liked this. Um, the design group liked this. Um, they thought that it was uh, a good image to represent what a learner should look like and what some of that should look like from a teacher's standpoint, what it should look like from a student standpoint, um, that it's not just about content and information, but it's about learners and skills and relationships and students, um, the methods that are used. And really the design of each page is pretty simple and straightforward. I started with the the strands and the subdomains here, and I just worked my way down and uh, went through each 
strand and subdomain to tell the viewer what it is or how uh, I came to fit into that strand. Um, so we use different, or I use different photos of field trips as artifacts. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones when we go to the Global Nature, Howell Global Nature Center. Um, a really awesome field trip uh, that I use to get to know my kids. We do it like in the third week of, of the school year and that's really a big bonding experience with my kids um, because one of the unique things about our school is um, a lot of our kids won't come from somewhere where they know a lot of people. Uh, again, we're 18 different districts housed in one building. So this is a way for students to get to know one another, to get to know me, uh, to have fun, and to start off with their first unit. I also put in um, this video for the purpose of, uh, I give this to my freshmen about how they can start their their skill building in terms of becoming a freshman at our school. Um, people commented how they, they liked the videos kind of throughout the, the presentation. Um, one of the comments I got was uh, making things a little more visual within the presentation. Sometimes I had files housed in there, um, but some people just didn't want to open the files. They wanted to have it more visually right there. Um, so Weebly has this tool for uh, which is scribed which allows you to put in documents so I put in um, our MYP unit planner um, which just kind of shows the the different uh, middle years program aspects that we put into our units and how they're designed and sequenced um, I tried to use screenshots of uh, things that I do with my kids as much as possible so Edmodo was a large resource that kind of appears a lot um, designing coherent instruction. Um, I try to use, also use like slideshows so that images and things weren't always like static, that things were moving. Um, kind of got the, the evaluator's eyes to be drawn to certain things. Um, so again, using scribe for certain things. And it's just, it's just progressing down through the domains. Um, and then I thought about adding buttons to the bottom of the navigation here but the navigation bar stays up at the top the whole time. Um, and so my feedback showed that most people thought that was, was fine and appropriate, and I didn't want to clutter up the page at all. So moving on to classroom environment. Um, this was one of the ones uh, that some people commented it was a little light on, but um, I wrapped up some of the subdomains um, and the strands into one place uh, talking about the social contract and how the social contract works in my room and how my room kind of uh, polices itself and that the kids largely do a lot of things um, in terms of monitoring behavior and, and redirecting kids. Um, managing classroom procedures. Um, I put in how I use Microsoft Forms to manage some basic procedures. Um, such as um, going to the bathroom, a simple one, just using a QR code scanner and signing in and out, and so things are tracked. Um, how I organize physical space in my room, how I use whiteboards in the back of the room, how uh, desks are grouped into pods, how my students are grouped into pods, um, all that is present. Um, and people, again, like those pictures. They like seeing the kids, the room, the things the kids were doing. Um, Using links, I tried to use, uh, when I mentioned something that was web-based, I tried to use links within the paragraph so that people could um, go right to those. Uh, so when here talking about instruction, how I communicate with kids, again, using Edmodo, how I use Remind, using screen captures so that people can see actual conversations I had, but I had to be careful about blocking out um, students' names. Um, using question and discussion techniques. Uh, was an interesting one. Uh, I did talk about how I use um, some elements of like our choices units, which is a major um, content driver for our middle years program. Um, how I do things uh, in terms of using uh, electronics. Sometimes when questioning kids, I don't always do things in class. Um, I had examples of this somewhere else, so I thought a neat thing would be to show how I use OneNote and how all students here are on the same page working in a group, and so I asked them exploratory inquiry questions, um, and they could put it all in OneNote, and kids can kind of um, 
it's like a big Google form for the whole class essentially in OneNote, and everybody's reporting their findings at one time. Um, how I engage kids, um, my hippie simulation. I talk about in here how I dress up for a hippie simulation. Um, getting kids up and out of the room. Uh, this is a YouTube video that I added in response to some of the feedback about people wanting to see some more things. Um, so I added some more video of my kids actually performing um, a, a lesson of an A partner, B, B partner uh, vocab review. Uh, here with using assessment and, and instruction, I put examples of actual quizzes that I use, but I also thought it was important here, again, using Scribe to actually put our rubrics in here so that people can see, like, these are the rubrics in, in our 910 program especially. Um, everything comes back to these rubrics. All assignments are tailored around these rubrics and the skills that are housed within them. Um, so what sometimes makes our assessment a little different is um, the rubrics pretty much always look similar and we just make the, the rubric fit uh, the task. So I wanted to see uh, people to see that the rubrics don't change much. It's just the task that we're doing the day and how it's applied to that. The demonstrating flexibility and responsiveness one uh, was a little bit weird. Uh, I don't know how you show that all the time, so um, there there wasn't as much to that one as maybe I would have liked. Uh, at the dem demonstrating professional responsibilities, put this on here. Uh, again, I'm not always sure how you show reflection, so um, I chose to put like a, a graphic image there instead. Um, but again, using screenshots of other things that I do within um, and trying to give a little bit of context to some of the pictures that I put in. Um, my use of my use of OneNote, um, again, my instructors talked to me about this, my subject matter experts about how they really liked stuff like this, how it really shows off what I do. Um, pictures of events that we run in our school that I'm, I'm part of student council and how that works. Um, and the uh, growing and developing professionally. Um, my different trainings that I've been to, I've been to three different trainings around the United States for different things. And so I put one of their certificates in here. Um, and for showing professionalism, I also put in the student uh, handbook and curriculum guide in that uh, part of me being a professional is adhering to this code um, and also making sure that students adhere to this code. And I put in uh, the professional documents, uh, my lit review, my resume, uh, my certification from the state. Um, I put all those things in there. Um, and I also put in a contact me page. Uh, I've debated about in, for also instead of like using this for evaluative purposes, um, to also use this as a way to give parents uh, something to look at and to see because our uh, meet the teacher night is a really short, short night. Um, we have block scheduling, so we have to get through eight sessions. Um, I only get to sit in the room with parents for about five minutes, so sometimes there's unanswered questions. You can't get to everything. So I thought about posting the URL for the site for parents to possibly be able to come visit and see some of the things that are done. Um, so, uh, But I also wanted them to be able to have a place to go to see my contact information uh, to be able to contact me if they had any additional further questions. Uh, but this is my portfolio. I got uh, good feedback in here. A lot of it was um, grammar based. Um, uh, some of it was, was pictures, so I had to replace some of the pictures and or add some pictures in some instances. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out in regards to this. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.